Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Ask Keith the Answers. Um, I got a lot of questions from you guys. I had expected like maybe five, maybe ten, but I got 33 questions in less than a day, and that's that's massive. Um, I fear that this is going to be a long episode. I mean, some of the questions are overlapping. Uh, it's going to be a lot of talking, so I'm just going to dive straight into it, and hopefully you'll enjoy the answers. Uh, X3 Brad says, how did you come up with the name Keith? And x one brain says, Keith, why are you called Keith? And Keith, why are you so awesome? Uh, the name Keith actually started back in Anarchy Online. I, um, the, the, that was like the first MMO I actually played, apart from RuneScape. I made uh, a martial artist, and I liked the name Keith, you know, the real name Keith. So I made a character, and I thought <clears throat> it would be sort of funny to spell it with a Q instead of a, a, a K. Unfortunately, back when I made that name, uh, I actually swapped around the I and the e, e, because Keith is spelled differently, and I didn't realize that until years later. Um, and I didn't really play on that character, so it's just weird. Then, in, in World of Warcraft, I made a druid for the fun of it, and he was called Keith, and I didn't really play much on him until much later, where I just decided to level him up. And it, it turned out to be my main, and then it sort of just um, stuck to me. Before that, I had used the name Keith on like the more shady sites, sites that you know I didn't really want people to know about. Uh, my screen name back then was Helios, like the um, Greek god of the sun, or as you'll find out, a very important character in the Deus Ex series. Actually, that was where I got the name from, not the Greek god of the sun. Um, so I used Keith on the more shady sites that you know, so I didn't I didn't want people to to Google Helios and then find embarrassing stuff but then um, as it turns out Keith sort of got became my my name and um, oh don't worry all the sites are gone now you can't find them anymore probably maybe I guess not um, and uh, and that's really how um, the name Keith started the bird called tweet says what is your job um, my job right now actually I want to tell you about my job a year ago a year ago I was the editor of a large social networking site in Denmark for teenagers, uh, and um, I did I handle all the administration and all the support. It was basically a position that I I created. I sort of got into the project, and when the project had a lot of uh, enough money, uh, they they called me and said, "Hey, do you want uh, a job?" And I said, "Yeah, hell yeah, I want to do that. I want to sit in on the chat side all day." And I did that for a long time, uh, for four years actually. I um, I worked a lot uh, closely with youth organizations in Denmark uh, and internationally. I worked with the Danish police, uh, fighting against pedophiles and, and um, IT crime and stuff like that. And I even had a, um, a position in a group in the European Commission, while we did a, a, a big project across the world where a lot of big social networking sites was in there, like um, uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, Google was in there. Um, MySpace and and all the smaller ones from the uh, from from you know the big ones in the small countries, uh, like Hives and Haber Hotel and and obviously Arto, which was the site I worked for in in Denmark. Unfortunately, and this is why I tell you this, th I spent four years in that, and previously probably another five years when I was a volunteer. Um, but the the site sort of crumbled and it didn't have the economy, and I lost my job, which meant that I had to suddenly start over my career, which was nasty. Uh, I, I applied for a job and got a job uh, in the, uh, the the biggest or the ISP of, of Denmark called TDC. We are basically, it's our cables in the ground and even though there are other ISPs, they use our cables and stuff like that. So we are the biggest and we do everything. I do tech support for TDC. Uh, if your broadband isn't working, you call me. If you don't know how to use our site, you know, you call me. If your phone's not working, who are you going to call? Keith, right? Uh, <clears throat> so I've been doing that for a year. I started out as a temp, and actually, finally, it was not you know not not really a temp because it was a permanent position, but as a temp, so you have no rights and you have little salary. And about three months ago, I finally got a permanent hire. We were like three people uh, of all the temps that actually got a permanent position. So that was great, and I'm slowly starting to uh, to build my career there. It's going pretty well. Uh, a lot of this work is like answering calls and stuff like that and I've sort of spent like half of my time not doing calls just doing special projects running around uh, um, doing special tasks uh, answering emails from 
you know, helping out other hotlines and stuff like that. So it's slowly going the way that I want it to go. Um, so that's what I do. I quite like it. I quite like uh, just to talk to all sorts of different people, you know, every day. Uh, I like the challenge because this is really technical. I, I had I had no knowledge of routers and, and broadband and, and networking and stuff like that before. But after <laughs> they gave us like seven weeks of education just before we uh, just before even gave putting us on the phone or like four weeks. And then we slowly started to to take calls and stuff like that. And um, the job just from that has given me a vast knowledge that I am very happy about using. And it's really fun because it's just a challenge, you know, you, you have a limited time for each custom because there's a lot of customers calling, so you have to do it quickly. You have to do it precisely so that they don't call again. You have to do it well so that they're actually happy. And it's a really nice challenge and it's actually pretty fun. Um, so long answer short, I do tech support. Guitar Pro 967 asks, what is your favorite game? And Biskmut asks, top five games of all time and follows up with any games you were really excited for that turned out to be disappointing. If I were to, it's really difficult to name my top five games. You, you, you got to imagine that because I've played so many games now. I'm nearly 25 and I've been playing video games since I was yay high. Uh, but if I have to make a quick list, it would be number five, uh, Diablo 2. Love the game. Number four, Super Meat Girl Boy. Absolutely love the game. Uh, third, World of Warcraft, when World of Warcraft was good. Uh, number two, Diz X, which is why I do a uh, Let's Play of it. And the number one best game I've ever played is Monkey Island 2. And I choose that because I played Monkey Island 2 when I was nine. Uh, bear in mind that in Denmark, we, we learn Danish when we're ten. Uh, sorry, we learn English when we're ten. So um, I had to learn English. So it's sort of special for me because I feel like that's the game that actually taught me English. And um, I had to have my mother's help for a lot of it, obviously, because I didn't really understand much of it. Uh, but it really, uh, <clears throat> it really was what you know, what really got me into serious gaming. It was just such a great game. Uh, the most disappointing game was actually um, <laughs> I've got to tell you how it was. You know, we played we played uh, Half Life back in the days. We played Opposing Force back back in the days, and it was really fun. And then um, they came out with Blue Shift. It was all like, it was all hyped up. It's like, you played Half-Life through the eyes of Gordon Freeman. And you played Half-Life as the opposing force. Blah, blah, blah. Now you can play the experience Black Mesa through the eyes of the security guard Barney. And, uh, and me and my friend was like, oh my god, Half-Life again. Um, so we went down to the shop and we actually split the cost because the game was nearly as much as, as a real game. And we got home and I was the first to get it. Uh, to play through it and after two hours two hours I was like done with it and I was like what the fuck and then I went over to my friend and said here you can have it I don't even want it back you just have it forever two hours later he calls me and says dude what the fuck um, <laughs> so that was like that was really disappointing we <clears throat> that game was so short and so expensive for the quality that it was and I was really really disappointed with that um, so yeah uh, Bandido Andreas asks, what is your favorite game genre? Um, that's a really difficult question, actually, because I, I don't really limit myself to one genre. Uh, because there's a lot of, you know, fun genres out there. I like shooters, obviously, Portal, Half-Life, um, a little bit of Modern Warfare. But I don't, you know, I don't play all of them. I, I don't go like, I must play every shooter in the world. I like platformers, uh, like Alice and... and, and Super Meat Boy even and stuff like that, but I don't play every one of them. If I had to pick like one category of games that I had to say that these are my my favorite ones, it would actually be indie games. Uh, and I know that the, you can have indie shooters, you can have indie platformers, indie puzzles and stuff like that. But it's just the 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 whole idea about indie games is that you don't need a big company to make great games. And actually, what what I find is that a lot of the indie games have really interesting gameplay. The uh, graphics might not be nice. They might maybe they don't have cool graphic uh, um, intros and stuff like that, cutscenes, um, and they might not be very long, but they're not very costly. There's a lot of love put into them, and it's it's more about making the games than the um, than, than making the money, right? Um, and oftentimes it's really really fun because there's just so much work put into it. Super Meat Boy, for example, 
two people working their butt off for for over a year, getting raped by Microsoft, and then struggling to actually just survive with no money, and then it turns out to be this awesome game, and even even like small flash games. I love playing flash games because it's just like one gimmick. You pick it up for an, and play it for an hour, and you're done with it. But you had a blast with it, and it's free for the flash game. So indie games. You know, small games, but with a lot of potential. That's my that's my favorite games at all time. Um, okay, moving on. Underground Dubstep says, "What was the first gaming platform you ever played on?" And Love Briac Briaxna said, "What is your favorite gaming platform?" Um, when I was a kid, my father worked as a graphics designer for a company that made like printed paper, like gift wrapping paper and, and book binding paper and stuff like that, and um, and he had a computer with like Windows 3, so that you know that that's really the first gaming platform like DOS and and the 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 very early um, um, games there. Uh, but the first gaming platform you know other than PC that I played was probably my Nintendo. When I was six, I got a Nintendo, um, and I had like Super Meat Boy, uh, not not Super Meat, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, two, my neighbor had three, but I never played one on on the Nintendo, and I had the Turtles game, uh, but I didn't really make it that far. Probably I was too young, so I didn't really have all the uh, motor skills for that. But I had uh, a lot of fun with the uh, Nintendo back then. Moving on to Frostfox eight nine eight, uh, asking what was the first game you played, and this goes back to my father's computer because. Back then, and maybe I was three or four. I, I don't really remember what the first game was because I was a kid. Uh, but the first, one of the first games I remember playing was Tristan. It was like this little pinball uh, game for 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 Windows three, um, which I played a lot with my mother. There was also this. I think I'm actually not sure, but I think it might have been like a Zelda game. Um, if you remember this, then actually drop a comment below because I really want to play that game again. But it was like, uh, I, I don't remember much of it. And um, what else? What else? I played, there was this, you know, Colgate, right? Uh, the, the, the toothpaste. They had a game where you were the tooth, the, the, one of the teeth and you uh, ran around and you shot toothpaste at the bacteria and stuff like that. I remember that. And uh, in Denmark, there was a, a popular, um, two popular, game, one popular game called uh, character called, called Hugo. Every Friday, people would call in and then they would play. They had to press on their phone number to make him uh, jump left and right and middle through a mine shaft. I don't know if it's big in other countries, but uh, there's a lot of games after that. But that was like the first game, and there was like uh, some some game with a uh, the walrus or some Oscar or something like that jumping from. Ice blocks to ice blocks and stuff like that. Those are some of the first games that I remember playing. And then obviously we move on to Wolfenstein, Doom, and Heretic, and uh, Monkey Island, and, and, and all those sorts of games. But um, <laughs> that was a really comprehensive answer. But that's that's, um, that's how it goes. White Knight Dubstep says, have you ever tried any drugs? Yes, I have. Uh, you know, I've been young as well and stuff like that. Um, I've never done any, any serious drugs like heroin or crack or anything uh, basically because I'm I'm scared witless of, of needles I, I can't stand needles I freak out around needles uh, so my mother is very happy that I'm not gonna be a junkie uh, I have tried like softer drugs and um, you know but but you know I, I live a normal life and, and you know I'm, I'm not really into I'm not doing drugs you know um, because you know I, I, you gotta you gotta keep your priorities straight I've seen a lot of friends that have gone down to drugs, and I don't want that to happen to anybody. Uh, I've lost a lot of friends that were decent people once, but then turns out to be these days just junkies, and they don't have a life anymore. And I, w I want a life. I want to be successful in my career. I want to have money. I want to have a family and stuff like that. And you can't do that very well if you can't use your brain. And I just think I'm too smart to waste it away on drugs. So without, I, I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm like, uh, giving you a hard talk, but but that's that's my stance on it, and um, and yeah. Cornfet uh, says, "Do you have a console like an Xbox <clears throat> that we can add you and play with you through that?" I don't have a console. I have a PlayStation Two, which uh, is very dusty right now. I I've used it for one game, 
Guitar Hero because I wanted to have it. I actually have Guitar Hero for PC, but I thought it would be more fun on, on, on TV. But then it turns out, you know, I didn't really play that much. And I've used the, the PS2 for, um, for because my DVD player broke, so I figured that's a, a good substitute, but I really don't use it. All I have is the PC, but uh, you can have my Steam if you want. It's uh, Helios DK, so <laughs> I hate that I hate that I, I need the DK, but that's how it is. Um, add me if you want. Uh, ask me questions, sure. Just uh, be warned that it is the death penalty if you uh, if you write me when I'm busy, or if you if you see me in a game that I'm currently running a let's play off because you can bet that I'm recording, and especially if you if you write me just to you know hope to be, get a spotlight. It'll just piss me off and I'll block you straight off. So, you know, but <laughs> other than that, I, you know, I add me, add me the hell out of it. Uh, because, you know, I like to talk to you guys and it's cool. Just, um, just chill, all right? Lee Prototype says, Keith, what is your motivation to continue doing what you do? Live stream and videos in general. Uh, my motivation is probably the comments. Um, I like the subscribers. I like the, um, uh, the views, but it doesn't really represent what kind of um, quality or what kind of videos you're doing. What really matters and what I think is really fun is the comments because I sit and play a game, I talk to myself for hours and hours every, every day, uh, but it's really nice to see you guys put feedback. You know, stuff that I do that I'm not really thinking about, you point it out immediately. Whenever I fail, you will give me a hard time of it. If I said something funny that I didn't even realize, then you take pleasure in it's the fact that you take pleasure in watching it and then actually telling me that you do because um, you know you can have a million subscribers I have 2,000 subscribers right but I don't get 2,000 views on my videos uh, because you know some some videos are not for everybody sometimes it's you know a lot of my subscribers came from um, being exposed and I'm, I'm sure that it's not really a, a, a representative a representative number of how many people who are actively following me. So subscribers is funny, but it's not a, a huge deal. Views is nice, but the 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 crust, the, the creme de la creme of everything, is your comments, and that's really what drives me on. I I think that if I didn't get you know just a couple of comments every video, it would probably die down. Well, I'd probably still do it because it's it's fun, and now I got into it. I, I've gotten into a good flow of it, but it wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't be driven as much as I am now if it wasn't for your comments. So, f you know, whatever, just, you know, comment all you want, as long as it's not those lame first, uh, second, third, 54th. So, you know. All right. Pro Aim Kia says, What got you into making vids and posting them on YouTube? And Sapphire Phoenix 08 says, How did you get into gaming and making the YouTube videos? In the beginning, when I started on YouTube, <clears throat> some of the first videos were some magic videos. You can see those if you go back, way back. Uh, but but some of the when I started, when I tried to you know start out making videos, I was actually very much inspired by uh, the atheist community, Thunderfoot uh, in particular, um, who is who is like a, a big YouTube channel speaking for atheists. And and, and 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 you know, I'm if you know me a little bit, you know I'm an atheist. Number. I have a very strong feeling about promoting atheism, and I made like a few videos where I just sit and talk to a webcam, and then that sort of died down. Um, later, I started watching let's uh, a lot lots of, of you know video game footage, uh, you know um, StarCraft replays and and Modern Warfare stuff and stuff like that, and I've always wanted to uh, to do that myself, but I couldn't really get a, get a hang of doing it right. It was either I didn't know how to edit stuff or I didn't know how to. Uh, uh, to record in the in the good um, resolution, and whenever I, I tried, I got like these massive files that took two hours to render, and it was like, what you want me to upload one gigabyte for a ten minute video? So after a while, it started really with Amnesia. I I sort of got into a flow, uh, and and the the games after Amnesia, I, I sort of got it all under control, uh, and. Um, I've managed to streamline the process so that I can actually sit there, play for an hour, two hours, go into Vegas, quickly, you know, mess it up, and then um, Vegas has this thing called batch render, which means I can define an area. This is video one, two, three, four, and then just leave it overnight to render. So it's actually really easy for me to make it, um, <clears throat> and um, that sort of got me into it. Then I was finally able to do what all the other people are doing. Uh, I follow a lot of let's plays myself. N you know, 
from time to time, you know, there are some some series that I follow a lot, and it's really fun. Uh, I follow other Let's Players for the same reason that you follow me, because it's fun to see other people play video games, and um, and and I'm finally at a place where I can easily do as other people are, and it's just a matter of going on from there. Um, Chances Five says, "My question for you is: Did you have any connects with more successful people on YouTube when you started?" And Fakir Gnome says, how do you get known on YouTube? Am I known on YouTube? Uh, did somebody advertise your name somewhere or did a magical pony fulfill your wishes? Um, when I started out, I had maybe like 50 subscribers, most of them probably my friends. And we had the little Minecraft uh, survival server and stuff like that, like a, a half a year ago or 10 months ago. And then JX23 was asking for Minecraft servers and, and he said, hey, Anybody have a micro server? And I say, hey, we have a micro server. Here's the video of it. And do you want to come on? And he made that uh, Minecraft server tour. He's only done two. And the first one was me. And he keeps linking back to it for the second one, stuff like that. Within, you know, he, he wrote me a message on Skype saying, oh, I, I posted uh, the, the video. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I checked my email like an hour later. And there was like 300 messages. Uh, it, I basically got spammed because I get an email every time people subscribe. Because uh, as and I still do this, I check every subscriber uh, on my channel just to see if there's any interesting channels, you know. Um, so, and and I probably got within the next couple of days probably 500 subscribers just from that because he has such a huge channel and simply being mentioned uh, is going to get your name out so quickly. It's unbelievable. And then. Um, you know, just adds up for there. Probably, I estimate that probably maybe 800, maybe a thousand of my subscribers are still are actually coming from that JX23 video, which is also, I suspect, why um, I don't have 2,200 views in every video. Because, you know, a lot of those subscribers only want to subscribe because of my Minecraft stuff, and I'm obviously not doing that much uh, Minecraft stuff right now. Um, but but that's fine. You know, maybe I'll upload something that they'll be interested in, and if not, then they'll just unsubscribe. Um, <clears throat> so so yeah, I did get a little boost from JX23, but I do feel that <clears throat> I got a lot of boost from the videos I make. I hopefully, um, hopefully I pop up in a search once in a while. Uh, the Portal 2 was pretty good because when you when you search for Let's Play Portal 2, mine is like the third. At least when I do the searches from different computers in Denmark, that's that's pretty neat. So unfortunately, the the searches for Portal 2 has died down, but I still get you know a couple of subscribers every day, so that's nice, and and that makes me happy. Uh, Flamer nine one zero run says, "What software do you use when you do your Let's Play videos, and also what are your computer specs?" <clears throat> I use uh, Sony Vegas, or oh, actually I use Fraps. I use an old version of Fraps because it records better, I feel, than the newer versions. Um, I use Fraps for recording the game. I use Audacity to co record my microphone so that I have the ability to, you know, mix in the, the sound volume in, because my microphone is generally really low, so when I do this, I can sort of mix and match the uh, sound so that you can actually hear it. Um, when I do it in Vegas, and that's the third one I use. I use Vegas to just um, edit my videos, and I'm not very good at editing videos. Let let, let me just say that, uh, but it 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 does what it's supposed to do, you know. So I can sort of I can make it work. Uh, my computer is actually about uh, about two years old now. It's a 2.3 gigahertz quad core. That's four with four gigabytes of RAM and a GeForce 260 uh, graphics card and I have like 500 gigabytes that's actually a big problem I have 500 gigabytes of space on my on my main hard drive and recording a let's play is about 800 to a thousand megabytes per minute of gameplay in the raw footage um, so actually I, I have to keep very few games on my well like I, I have with, with everything deleted I have maybe 250 gigabytes of space and then I can play for a couple hours, and then I can render that overnight, and I can delete that and play on. And then the the small videos I have, I put out, I have an external hard drive for like uh, 1,000 uh, gigabytes or one terabyte, uh, which I work. But the biggest issue is the small uh, space, you know. Uh, but that's that's my computer specs. It's not really that interesting. I have a 24-inch widescreen monitor that I used to play on, and a 
I think it's 21 normal screen, uh, standard size screen as my secondary monitor, uh, which is kind of neat setup because I can play on the big one and I can have Fraps and Audacity and my recorded folder and stuff like that visible on the other screen, but it obviously doesn't record that. So that helps a lot. And that's just a perk because for the last five years, a long time, I've been used to having having five uh, five screens, you know. Um, yeah, moving on. Sorry about that. Tatsudushi fan says, Keith, do you play World of Warcraft? And then Wildglitcher says, uh, Wildglitcher 100 says, what WoW server do you play on? And I'm going to follow that up with an answer or a question to that because Flopglut21, who has been <laughs> paying attention in class, says, do you think you'll ever return to WoW or you will return to WoW soon? Are you, going, are you waiting for some new interesting stuff to come out or are you done with it and maybe waiting for a new MMO? RPG. Uh, at the moment, I don't see myself going back to WoW, but I feel that I might, you know. Um, unfortunately, WoW has sort of... Okay, what... To get me back to WoW, WoW needs to go in the opposite direction of where it's going now. It, there's been a lot of work to accommodate casuals, which I think is weird because the casuals... Well, it's not weird, but I just don't feel like, you know, I don't understand why... Uh, you have to be Medicore, you only have to be Medicore to get the best gear in the game. Uh, when I played WoW, I played, you know, raided a lot, and um, the amount of work that we put in gave us the best gear, and if somebody paid, put just a little bit of effort into it, they got almost as good gear, so it was just, and everything sort of just became easier and easier. So I sort of started to get, become bored with WoW. If there is a, a challenge and uh, an actual gap between the, uh, an actual mark between the work we put in to, to kill the hard stuff when it's active, uh, then, then, you know, if there's a reward for that, then I'll probably go back to WoW. But as it is now, probably not. And I wonder if I'm ever going to go back to MMOs because they, they can be really time consuming. I don't like to play casual because then that just makes me, makes it bored, uh, boring. I don't go for achievements. Uh, because then that's just, you know, what's the point of that, you know? So it has to be sort of pretty hardcore, but then that's pretty time consuming. And I'm in a groove right now where I like to do the Let's Plays and, and play with that. And I like the, to be able to not have three to five rate nights a week that I have to be. So right now, I'm not really looking forward to any MMOs. I haven't even tried Rift, and I don't know about the Star Wars thing. And, you know, we'll see, but I don't think that it's... I don't really... Right now, there's no MMO that's really drawing me in. Bob the Bob King says, How long did it originally take you to complete Portal 2? Well, the Portal 2 Let's Play is about 5 hours and 15 minutes. Uh, that's with the credits and the song and stuff like that. And it was probably... I probably cut out 45... That probably 45 minutes. That's probably nine. So 6 hours, 6 to 7... Maybe 7 hours. It's, you know... I didn't fail that much, but there was like gaps in the game that I really had to cut out. 20 minute where, where I was just stuck in one room because I missed a button or something completely obvious that I just missed. And I didn't want to put you through that. Um, so, six, maybe seven hours is the answer. Infernape, what? Infernape, Infernape 5000 says, Why don't you play more StarCraft 2? Uh, because I suck at StarCraft 2. Did you see the video? With the uh, that I put up, man, I, I really suck at StarCraft, and the problem is I I've, I've been placed in gold. I actually made, got myself up to gold as Protoss, and then I said I don't want to play Protoss anymore. I want to be a Cirque, and then <clears throat> I was suddenly in gold without knowing how to play Cirque, and then it's just frustrating because I lose so much, and I don't re I don't really know what to do past 20 harvesters, and then it's just like mishmash, and I get frustrated, and it's not that fun. Uh, when I do that. So eventually, I'm, I've been thinking maybe I just lose so many games that I'll drop down to bronze or whatever, copper, and then just start up from there again, because that might be a better way to do it. Uh, but that's why I don't play more StarCraft 2, really. Uh, I tell a wishin says, who is, in your opinion, the best gamer of all the game gamers you know? Uh, oh yeah, and what is what color is your underwear? My underwear, uh, my underwear is black. All my underwear is black. It's it's actually the same boxes, not the, not the one pair, but all the pairs are the same, really. Um, the best gamer is a really difficult question because are you talking about publicly known gamers because or or like people I know? Because 
I can't really point to one publicly known gamer because they're usually known for the games that they are known for, you know? So they're pretty good at that, you know? Uh, um, TLO is good at StarCraft because, and he's known because he's good at StarCraft and, and you know, stuff like that. And if I mention people that I know that are pretty good gamers, like my friend Rune, he's really good at StarCraft um, and at kicking my ass and everything. Uh, you have no idea who he is, really, and, and there's no, not really any point to, to mention that. So it's a really difficult question to answer. Um, so, yeah, I, I, can't, I, can't really, I can't really give you a, a good answer for that, because everybody has their niche, and um, you don't have to be a good gamer to, to be a gamer. You know, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, if you want to make, make money off it, then you have to be a good gamer, but uh, as long as you... Gaming should just be fun. You know, no matter what good, how good you are, I play all my games on normal just to get a challenge. You know, uh, but you know, I'm still a gamer. I enjoy the the games, and that's really all that matters. Love Zone Gaming says, and this is a long one. <clears throat> okay, Keith, I see you as an and professional commentator. That's what he says. Sure, you're not as big as I think you should be, but you're great. Thank you very much. I love you. Uh, so here's a question. Maybe it's a little odd, but. Uh, you got any tips or whatever you want to call it for other commentators that is not that's not as great as you lol bow down to King Keith and I like that thank you very much um, yes I do have some tips because um, it actually goes together your hand in hand with the, with the work I do because I, I talk on the phone a lot uh, and I'm not I'm, I don't I don't see myself as a professional uh, commentator not even an professional commentator um, because I say um, a lot, really. What you need to do, and this is probably the best tip you can you can ever get, if you want to be better at comment uh, commentating, you have to commentate. Talk, talk, talk. Especially if you do, if you're doing let's plays, there's going to be a lot of dead time, and you, you you're going to want to sort of fill that up with something interesting. So you got to be comfortable speaking to yourself. Uh, and what I did actually when I started out is I'm I started you know. Uh, <laughs> um, just narrating my daily day-to-day -day life. Okay, I'm just about to uh, to cook, cook, cook some food. We just got to get this pan and clean it up because I didn't really do that great a job last time. And I need to find the butter, 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 but I'm all out of butter. Maybe I have some oil. No, I'm screwed. Okay, I'm just gonna fry it with nothing. You know, stuff like that. It sounds silly, but just start talking to yourself. Uh, obviously, there are some ways that you can you can speak, but the the best tip ever is just talk, talk, talk. Um, a lot of it, it's really difficult to start out because one of the biggest issues is that eventually you'll end up hearing yourself speak and you sound terrible. And, and you know, you don't, but that's how you hear it because when you hear your own voice, it's just really weird to hear that. Um, and I get confused. Actually, it, when, when, when I have calls and, and the caller has an echo on their phone and I can hear my own, my own voice. I'm like, oh my god, what's what's going on? Who's that guy? Do I really sound like that? And it's actually terrible. But you got to get over that. Eventually you find out that people don't really care, that you're probably fine and and it's not big of a, uh, that much of a, a, a deal, really. Uh, so, number one tip, talk. Talk, talk, talk. Practice, really. Um, and talk to yourself. It's a lot of fun and you're not at all crazy. Oh, oh, oh. Albert Einstein asks, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? And obviously a woodchuck could chuck no matter what since a woodchuck can't chuck wood. And I know you'll ask me, you know, but if a woodchuck could chuck wood, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? And I ask, you know, even if a woodchuck could chuck wood, why would a woodchuck chuck wood? And I know that people usually say that if a, that a woodchuck should chuck wood, if a woodchuck could chuck wood, so how much wood would the woodchuck chuck? And I really have no idea. Billy and Ben TV asks, why do you not do Minecraft videos of your server anymore? Um, well, the question really is, why don't I do Minecraft videos at all? It's because, you know, I've played Minecraft for a long time and there's not really that much new stuff to do in it. The server's pretty fun, but I haven't been on there for a long time because I haven't really had the time. And, you know, Minecraft is fun, but only in small doses, really. Um, actually surprised that that's the only Minecraft question that came around. Okay, Twisted Flames says, Keith, what do you want for your birthday? Uh, 10,000 subscribers, please. Or World Peace. No, actually, screw World Peace. Just give me some subscribers. That would be fun. 
Uh, I don't really, I'm not really big on birthdays, especially not because it's my 25th birthday coming up on the 27th of June, hint, hint. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't understand why we have to celebrate surviving another year. Uh, but that's, that maybe I'm just getting grumpy and stuff like that. I, I really don't, you know, when, when my family asked me, I just said money. Or if I need something like a gift certificate for clothes or... Once in a while, I think I, I I asked for a for a table once, you know, recently, and I got a gift certificate for that, but I didn't I haven't picked it up yet. So you know, I'm not really big on gifts and birthdays and stuff like that, and I'm not gonna do anything special. I'm gonna go to work, do my job, go home, have some food. Not gonna do anything else this year, I think. Uh, Me Pain One asked, "Are you proud of being Danish and why?" I don't know if I'm proud, but I'm 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 content with being Danish. Uh, there was a time in my life where I I didn't really want to live in Denmark anymore, but right now I, I sort of like it. I like the the weather is not too cold, not too hot. People are nice. We have a good you know social life in Denmark, and we are pretty well protected with healthcare and and public transportation and stuff like that. Uh, he also asked, "Are you happy uh, being yourself a gamer, or would you rather be Pete from down the street?" Uh, obviously, you know. I, th I think all of us want has some stuff in our lives that we uh, we would like to change. I like being a gamer, but I don't think that defines me. That's just you know stuff that I like to do. There's some stuff that I would have wanted different in my life, but not anything that has anything to do with gaming. And uh, you know, as it turns out, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Also, final question from me, Payne, is what city do you live in? I live just outside Copenhagen in a city called Sibor. Roku asks, Keith, will you answer this question? Yes. Rrr says, can you subscribe me back? No. And I want to note on that. Uh, these uh, sub for sub things are really crazy. What's the point of that? You know, I'll, I'll follow you. I'll subscribe to you if you make some content that I'd like to see. Uh, in this person's case, it's not. You know, I check every subscriber and see if there's anything interesting. And if there is, I'll subscribe them. Uh, if not, then I won't. And it's really pointless to to sub for sub really because what's the point if you're not gonna you know the subscribers doesn't mean anything really it's the content and pleasing people with the content you put out there uh, so no 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 Giga Boost says um, will you ever do more let's please with that dope fish guy he's totally cool and I want him to have my babies yes dope fish I will do more let's please with you <laughs> Mr Alex War is uh, says how did you get into the uh, flying spaghetti monster are you still are a pastafarian uh, and learn to learn to learn from youtube says how is the spaghetti monster and the spaghetti monster is fine or are you asking like more of a, um, a philosophical question how is he i don't know he just is uh, i'm still a pastafarian but you got to realize that pastafarianism is more like a uh, um it's more of a response to religion rather than an actual religion. I mean, if you ask me, I, you, I'll say I'm an atheist. But obviously, it's more of a gimmick, really, than a way of life because it is just made up for, for the fun of it. Uh, but yeah, I will praise the Flying Spaghetti Monster and I will uh, make a little... Let's just say I make, make my hand look like noodles or spaghetti whenever I eat pasta. I don't know. I say my ramen every day. Uh, no, no, no. But but you know, the thing about pastafarianism is it's just you gotta understand that it's just a response to uh, to religion and the way that you know religion is sort of pushing with their elbows to get in everywhere, and and pastafarians are like, well, okay, if if your religion should have the re the respect uh, that you want, then this religion should too. So yes, I am a pastafarian, but I am. Above all, an atheist, and um, yeah, that's just uh, that's just how it is. Phew! That was all the questions. That was like 33 questions, and we went through all of them. That was a really long episode. If you've listened through all of this, then props to you. You are a true fan of Keith, and you are awesome. Uh, but it was great fun. It was it was nice to just be able to talk about me. I have a, a very large ego, so I love it when I get to talk about me and other people listen to it. Um, I hope you had fun as well. I hope it gave you a little bit of more insight into the way of Keith. And um, maybe we'll do that later at some point. Until next time, go watch Alice. Go watch um, 
uh, Super Meat Boy, uh, Dus X, and, and all the other Let's Plays. Have some fun. Actually, when you're done with that, go play some video games. Have some fun. Until next time, see ya.